seven points in the second quarter. That's up three points on the first quarter. The survey looks at confidence levels within various sectors of the banking system, namely retail, banking, investment, banking, uh, assess, asset management and life insurance. Well, here to tell us more about sentiment within the banking sector is Emilio Pera. He's Africa Financial Services lead leader at EY. Thank you very much for joining us, Good Emilio. Evening. Now, we see, or I see, that uh, retail banking confidence it declined from 74 points to 67 points and that profits were also down to their lowest since 2001. Can you just explain uh, what's going on behind those numbers? If, if you look at um, credit extension and um, there, there's definitely uh, less demand for, for credit which does put pressure on, on the top line and uh, we've seen interest revenue increasing but non-interest revenue so the transactional revenue um, reducing. Um, although the banks have uh, tried to contain costs, that is increasing and at a faster rate than income is coming through, which results in the net decline in, in, in profits. Um, but I, I suppose it's, it's looking at the macroeconomic environment. Um, there's definitely pressure um, in, in the top line. And although banks are, have as, uh, relaxed the, the credit standards, which means they are, are looking for people to lend money to, um, we haven't seen the, the demand for that. What could be, if you consider the new uh, credit regulations from the national credit regulator um, and, and just the general indebtedness of, of the consumer, that they, they're unable to, to take up um, those loans. It's interesting you say that because there is an expression that with great risk comes great reward. And of course, a few years ago, the banks became quite a bit risk averse around consumers not being able to pay back their loans. And then the approval criteria got more stringent. Yes. Do you think that's part of the reason why the profits are not coming through? It's partly looking at the overall risk profile and we've seen unsecured lending significant growth over recent years and definitely the banks pulling back from that, especially after the African bank um, demise that we had um, last year. But at the same time, significant regulations came into effect um, in 2007 with the National National Credit Act earlier this year with further amendments to that act and, and then also um, so some, some limits to, to interest rates. So, so I think the, the environment in which the banks operate uh, from a regulatory perspective is also uh, putting limits to, to who they can extend credit to. Okay, so we've spoken about the retail banking sector. Interestingly, I see that asset management confidence rose by 29 points from 45 to 74. Can yes. you just explain to us why? So the way we do the, the asset managers is we look at large asset managers and smaller ones and, and look at the net inflows um, on the large um, asset managers, definitely positive inflows, so money that people want to have invested. And also they've managed to contain their costs. Um, so it has a, is a positive story for, for them. However, on the smaller um, asset managers, uh, we've seen less positive inflows, so, so still positive inflows, but less so than for large ones, and also cost increasing. But if you look at the asset management segment as a whole, uh, the large ones who dominate, definitely a, a more positive story um, coming through. Now, I see that there's a general theme about costs in your overall report, mm. that they are rising. Yes. What's causing them to rise? And presumably, it's not so easy for these financial houses to palm them off onto the consumer as it has been historically. Um, definitely, if you, if you look at the competitive environment, um, we have a, a few large uh, players in the market um, and, and very competitive with a few new um, players coming in, um, in the banking sector, as, as an example. So within that environment, um, the, the need to invest for innovation um, uh, is, is, is one factor, but also increasingly so is uh, the investment to comply with, with new regulations as they come through. Uh, we've had a, a, a whole a range of regulations over the last couple of years, and every time there, there's the cost that, that banks have to, to incur. Um, and it's also, in a way, uh, a number of our banks, especially the large banks, have, have older legacy systems, same for in, insurers. And it is to replace those with, with um, newer technology, especially the point that I made earlier to deal with the new innovation that we're seeing on the front end um, of uh, the client facing uh, tools that they're using. Now, I see from your report that, that uh, people in the life insurance sector are the most optimistic. Does that suggest that uh, 
we consumers, as much as we're having a hard time, we're more concerned about what's going to happen in the future than just our basic immediate needs. So if, if you look at the insurance sector, definitely a, a positive story. As you say, it's been the, the, the segment within financial services that has been most positive over the, over the, over the last uh, couple of quarters. And, and it is showing that um, we, when, when um, the consumer is unstrained, they, they let their life policy lapse. And, and the lapses are definitely not coming through, which is a, a positive um, indicator. Also, new policies um, that's been taken up is, is on the rise, always positive um, in, 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 the, in the first quarter of this year. However, um, the income generated is slightly lower than what we saw towards the end of last year. So although there's a, a slight negative, I think the, the other two positive um, aspects um, is, is the reason for that positive. So outlook. the volumes are picking up, but the, the actual premium itself is not is, ticking. It's slightly, so. slightly lower. And, 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 and I suppose you have to look at it over uh, a period. You, you can't look at it at, at only a specific quarter, and, but that's what we're seeing in this quarter. But to your point, the volumes are there and you're not seeing people um, uh, dropping off um, and, and closing or not um, paying their, their policies. And very succinctly, Emilio, the second half of the year, we're still under pressure. We're expected to grow around 2%. Your expectations? The, the, the market uh, will, will remain under pressure. Um, I think the pressures that, that, that I've spoken about um, will, will, if there's no positive news, will probably become more severe. Uh, we haven't seen um, impairments or bad debts come through on, on the banking sector. And, and I suppose if, if the, the, the macroeconomic environment remains where it is at the moment, you'll probably start seeing a tick up in that side. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Emilio. You. That was Emilio Pera. He's Africa Financial Services Leader at EY.